Hey guys, Feto Gamer here. Today I'm going to go through with you the eight things that you need to know before getting into video game collecting. So the first thing is that you're going to need is space. So you're going to need somewhere to put your collection. Now this sounds pretty obvious, but you need something that you can grow into. So when I started, I had these old video game shelves that were already in my house. And basically what I wanted to do when I started out is I just wanted to fill them so that the covers were facing. Then it ended up that I wanted them so that all the spines were facing. Then I had to buy extra shelving. So another three DVD stands in order to put them all in. Plus I had to get shelves for all my figurines and things like that. So you need somewhere where you can one, sit down and admire your collection because it's going to be a lot of hard work and it's something that you are going to want to display and take in. And two, something where you can come home and easily organize things into alphabetical order and sort through your collection. You don't want to be having things in boxes and, you know, in containers and having to go through to see if you've got the games already. You just want it on shelves. You want it very obvious. Now, the ones that I am buying now, that they're, they're basically separated. So basically, the ones I've got now have all these little sections in them. And they're not really ideal because basically it means that you have to keep taking games out and putting them in again. What you would ideally want is a long spanning shelf where you can slot things in and move them across so you're not having to always shuffle them along. The second thing you're going to need, you're going to need a goal. So for myself, when I first started collecting video games, now I had never had an Xbox 360. Bear in mind, I've only been collecting games for two years. So I wanted an Xbox 360. I wanted all the Halo games. And then after I got all the Halo games, which was, let's face it, a couple of weeks, I wanted to have every single Xbox 360 game. So now I've got uh, over 700. I don't know the exact count and the, I think there's about 1100 games in total. So I'm on my way there but it's a long term goal. So and my other goals as I said previously were to have like all the, the cases displayed and then to have all the spines. So you need to have short term goals and long term goals with your collection so that you're always buying for something as well. Next thing you need which is the biggest one or one of the biggest ones is you need to educate yourself. So you need to learn how much games sell for, learn how much things sell for individually, the best way to sell them. Things like when I first started, as I said, I started with Xbox 360. I got about 30 games and I think I paid, what was it, about $4 a game, which two years ago wasn't too bad. Got them home, I was super excited. They were disc only, but I was still excited. Turns out that they were all burnt games. I um, literally didn't know the difference between what a burnt game looked like and what an original game looked like. So I, I got a bit burnt, pardon the pun, on that one. And then I learnt my lesson. I learnt, you know, what to look for in the most basic thing. But it's also things like which games sell really well. Normally your sports games, so your FIFA games, all that, don't sell very well and then you sort of your kids games sell really well and your more obscure sort of RPGs sell well as well but you want to do some research you want to watch some videos on YouTube now I will recommend some videos uh, well some people to watch on YouTube and I'll put links to their channel in the description so the first one is the last gamer so this is a really good one for like organizing your collection this is the guy in Melbourne Joel Hopkins who has the biggest collection in the world so I think he's got like 17,000 video games and he's got the Guinness World Record. Really good to watch him. The other two which are really good are Radical Reggie and Metal Jesus Rocks. So these guys are based in America and they do a lot of like what's rare on different consoles. So they'll, they'll have like top 10 rarest games. Good to watch those so then you know that if they ever come up in a lot, in a bulk lot, that you're going to make your money back almost on one game. Very entertaining. They're collectors as well and sort of give you a good idea of, you know, what's worth more money. Speaking about money, that comes to our fourth point. You're going to need some money. Now, you won't need a great deal. Um, you should be able to start off with just a couple hundred dollars, but just remember that it can take a while for the games to sell, especially if you're selling for a decent price. Like some of my games now take like three, four months to sell. So you have to sort of not spend more than you can afford. So, you know, you'd never spend rent money or money for bills on games because you might not get it back straight away. But you shouldn't need to invest too much. The thing that can happen though 
is you might get something really, really cool. You might get this really rare game that's worth $200. However, you might need to sell that in order to fund more of your collection because hanging on to that game at the moment might not be worthwhile for you. Even things like, you know, if you pick up some Xbox One games, for example, and there's some new release ones there, like let, let's say NBA 2K18. So you've got a lot of games and one of those games was that. Now, yes, you know, it would be good to add it to your collection. However, you know, right now you can probably get a decent amount of money for it because it's pretty new. So you could sell it off. And then in six months time, you can probably pick it up for like 10 bucks. Got to sort of think of things like that as well. What's going to build your collection fastest and give you the best cash flow to keep going. Number five is strategy. So what I did when I first started selling and collecting games is I would basically price up all the individual components and sell everything separately. So I'd buy an Xbox 360, two controllers, you know, 20 games. Each game I'd sell off individually. The controllers I'd sell off individually. I'd take the hard drives out of the Xboxes. I'd sell them off individually. If it's the older Xbox 360 Elite, so the old black ones, the original ones, they usually come with a Wi-Fi adapter and they usually sell for more than the console. So I'd sell them off separately as well. So it's all knowing what you can sort of sell things for that will you know, sort of bolster your collection. Even things like if you're, let's say you're collecting PlayStation 2 and you get a network adapter. Now they sell for a great amount of money because they enable people to put like an internal hard drive in. It's all things that you've got to know to look for in order to sort of, you know, build your collection faster. But definitely selling things off separately rather in lots is what I do. And I think it's the way that you get the most money. Even things like, you know, you think, okay, you've got four Halo games. Why not sell all four of them off together and you know make a you know sell a lot at a lot of time people get a good deal you know it, common sense would say yeah that's that's a great idea however someone might only be after like halo 4 and they don't want the other three so why would they pay extra for it so selling them off individually makes more sense and then it's more of an emotional buy for people they're not just buying to say oh yeah i'll buy like four games or 20 games they're buying because they're saying oh look I'm looking on eBay for Halo 4. I really want this. Oh, I can get this one pretty quick and it's the cheapest one on there. Yeah, I'm buying it. A lot of times they won't even consider a bulk one. So, you know, strategy does come into it and you've got to really think through what's going to be most worthwhile. This next one's quite important and something that I've sort of been caught on before and this is time. So you've got to put a, a value on your time as well. So there's no point, you know, an hour negotiating with someone and then an hour and a half there and back to drive to the house to pick, it, pick up some games if you're only going to make $20, you know, and, you know, you've already got all the games. You've really got to bear in mind that, yes, you know, your time is worth an amount of money. And you should set yourself a minimum for what you are, what you're willing to sort of go out to someone in order to make. The other thing that I do as well, which I'll cover in subsequent videos, is if if I've got something so for where I am, uh, south of the river, I'm north of the river. If I've got items south of the river, quite often I'll save them. And then if I'm picking up one, I'll try and pick up them all. So that way I'm making better use of my time. The next two, sort of the two that everyone would think of. So the first one is how to buy games. So in this, you've got to be able to negotiate. You've got to be able to know how to phrase offers. I always am polite to people. So first of all, I'll send a very generic message. And it's usually the one that's sort of formatted the way the system does it. So it says, hey there, would you consider $80 for this? You know, and then they'll respond. They'll say, oh, look, um, I'll go to 100 and then you've just got to really weigh up how much it's worth you. Sometimes I'll just, you know, 80 might be the offer that I'm willing to pay because I don't really want anything in there. And then my response to that would be, unfortunately, $80 is my limit on this and they'll leave it. Quite often they'll come back after one or two days and they'll say, oh, look, you know, if you're still interested, I'll, uh, you know, I'll take 80. Or the other thing they might say is, look, you know, I want 120. And then if I do really want it, I'll say, oh, look, I can go to 90 if that helps. You know, it's all knowing how to phrase things. Um, also, most people, and you can imagine yourself if you're selling like a lot of games, they don't like people that resell games, but they, they quite like collectors. So if it ever does come up, which some people ask me when I go to the house, they'll say, oh, you know, what are you going to do with the games? I'll say, oh, look, I collect games. So, you know, a lot of these will go in my collection and people are usually quite happy with that. And I've also found as well, 
when I am going to someone's house, I always make sure to say, oh, hey, I'm going to be there between one and two on this day and I'll message you as I'm leaving. So I'll message them and say, look, I'm going to leave now, I'll be there in about half an hour. And then I'll usually message them when I'm about five minutes away as well, just say, hey, I'm five minutes away. So what this means is basically they know I'm coming, they've got everything ready, I can grab the things and I can go. Also, if you're polite to people along the way, I also found, find that a lot of times people say, like, I'll go there to pick up 30 games, and then they'll say to me, oh, hey, the reason why I'm selling these games is because my Xbox broke, do you want some controllers and stuff? And I'll say, oh, yeah, and they'll just throw them in. So it never hurts to be polite to someone because, you know, it's, it's mutually beneficial. And, you know, a lot of times if someone sort of and it doesn't happen often, but if someone does sort of give me a bit of attitude when I am negotiating with someone, I'll usually leave it because it's not worth the hassle. The next one, which is quite an important one, and the last point, point eight, is a way to sell the games. So this is something that you have to figure out what's going to be best for you. So for myself, I use eBay because I, I work pretty long hours, so I don't have time to wait around for people to come and collect one, two, three, four games. So I'd rather just sell them online, package them up, send them in the post, then I don't have to worry about waiting around. Everything's pretty automated for how I sell it, which I will go through in subsequent videos as well. And it just works for me. The disadvantage with that is now every time I sell something on eBay I'm paying two dollars postage 16 cents for an envelope I'm paying you know 30 cents to PayPal plus 2.9 percent of what it sells for and I'm paying 10 percent to eBay so if I sell something for six dollars on eBay so let's say I bought a game on average for two bucks I sell it for six dollars what I'm actually selling that game for what I get in my pocket is three dollars so it's it's costing me $3 to sell a game on eBay for $6. $6. So, you know, for that, I've really got to just sell, you know, what sort of sells for higher rather than the lower ones. Because if I sold a game for $4, I'm basically making a, you know, just over a dollar and it's not worth it. So each way of selling games has its advantage and disadvantage and you've just got to see what works for you. So the other way you can sell things is obviously you can go to markets, you could have a market stall sell it that way. You could sell on Craigslist, Gumtree, OfferUp. Now I, when I first started, I would sell on like Gumtree, which is sort of like a Craig, Craigslist sort of thing. And I would actually do up packages. So I would have like three, like I'd have three Xbox 360s all exactly the same and I'd have three copies of games. So I'd usually have like four games that I've got three copies of, and I'd advertise it. So Xbox 360 with one controller, which would usually be a wired controller, and four games for like, you know, $60 or something like that. So basically the games, uh, I couldn't sell if even if I wanted to. They'd w be worth about $2 each. The console, yeah, it's, you know, probably worth about you know, $40, something like that. And then the controller would be worth about 10 bucks or something like that. So basically I'd be getting all my money for it, but it'd give someone a bit of a package. So then I'd sell it a bit quicker and I'd always advertise just one, but I'd have three of them. So then people would keep inquiring and then I'd be able to sell more off it. And that sort of helped my cash flow in the early days. I, I don't recommend packaging up too much. You just want to give people a couple games. If you say, you know, 10 or 20 games, they're going to really look through them and go, oh, I don't want that game. I don't want that game. And it's, it's just not going to be worth it for them. So you want to keep it as simple as possible and get the price points down. So for where I am in Australia, if things go over a hundred dollars, people sort of start, you know, thinking, oh, you know, I don't know if I want that. 50, 60 bucks is pretty much a no brainer. That's something that, you know, a parent would buy for their kids for the school holiday. So they've got something to do. A teenager would buy, you know, for the weekend so they can play games with their friends. You know, it's, you, you've got to really think of price points when you're selling things and what your perceived value is different to what their value is. So look guys, that gives you a bit of an introduction into collecting games. Now I will be going over everything individually. So I've actually got, including this video, I've got six videos that I'm gonna be doing and it may turn into more of a series as that as things go on. It'll either be on a Monday, Tuesday, just depending on my scheduling, because I do post a new video every two days. So if you could hit the subscribe button and also hit the little bell next to it, when I do have my next one up in the series, you will be notified on that. And the next one that I'll be doing is how to buy games. So a pretty important one. 
which will explain my strategies for buying games, how to get them cheaper, how to get them in bulk, and basically build your collection for uh, nothing or make a small profit. Thanks very much for having a listen of this introduction. I know it's common sense things, and if you thought of it yourself, you know, you'd say, yeah, those are obviously the things I'd need, but hopefully I gave you a bit more description of why they're so important, and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching Fatso Gamer. Please hit like and subscribe and I will see you on the next video.